whatever is built and whatever is going to actually do well, there has to be consumer demand and consumer pull for it. Hey folks, Flo here at uh, Beyond Blockchain here in Ottawa in partnership with Web3 Ottawa and uh, Invest Ottawa and uh, Innovation Gatineau. I got them all right. I'm here with Kate Withers of Function Land. Yes. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start with a very cheeky question. Is crypto still alive or is it dead? Oh, we're still early. <laughs> it's very well alive. Going through a bit of a bear market, um, getting rid of some of the weaker projects, but the true ones will prevail. Okay, what makes you believe that it's still so dynamic? What are you tracking in particular? What are you looking at? I'm looking at the deepen sector, um, the RPC factor, and looking at sort of the intersection of crypto and AI. And I know that AI is going to very much need decentralized physical infrastructure networks to be cost effective and to serve its users properly. Oh, very well said and very much to the point. Is Canada still a good place to build in Web3? I mean, if we're honest, we have seen a lot of players leave, mm -hmm. most notoriously Ethereum, a long time ago. But I'm wondering if you think, you know, or perhaps said differently, why it's a good place to build here. Yeah, I think it's a great place to build. I think when we saw um, fintech products start to emerge and be built in Canada, it was because there's such a strong commercial banking and regulatory sector you know, in Canada, in Toronto. Same with crypto. I think there's incredible talent. So coming out of University of Waterloo, I'm sure Carlton, Algonquin College is here. Um, so the talent is here and there's really brave founders and lots of incubators and accelerators and a lot of um, community organized groups coming together and just really supporting builders. So we've, um, we were the birthplace of Ethereum and I think we will be uh, the birthplace of lots of really strong projects um, well into the future. In any particular segment of the ecosystem, you, you, you could see sort of Canadian innovation? Yeah, for sure. I think if you look at, you know, Montreal and Toronto and, and Ottawa, of course, there's a lot to focus on AI and deep learning, machine learning, computer vision. So as these start to um, progress, we're going to see Canadian projects shine. And then we've always been strong in networking. So up here in Canada and Ottawa, strong in telecommunications. And um, so as that moves to more decentralized, infrastructure will be big players in that. Awesome. So Function Land has been around for at least three or four years, maybe yes. even longer than that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. So at Function Land, we're building a decentralized cloud alternative to big tech. Um, we're doing this through these little hardware units that our community named FX Blocks. So everybody has one of these at home and you save your files and photos to it. It's your personal server. It can be your Minecraft server. And with these nodes, you save your own files and photos. We could save each other's files and photos reciprocally. And you get paid for the compute and storage you contribute to the network. So my one at home came with one terabyte. I'm now contributing three terabytes and earning rewards. So every day, I open the, my de decentralized application up and I can see the rewards I've earned for that um, compute. Now, from my understanding, is the data actually decentralized? Yes, so if you save your files and photos to an FX Blocks unit, it gets um, replicated at least five times across the network. So your little FX Blocks unit can enter a pool and your data is saved at least five different times redundantly. So if something happens to your unit, you're always able to pull your um, files or your data. And we make use of protocol labs technology called IPFS, Interplanetary File System, and LibP2P, which really ensures that safety of your data for long many years to come. Interplanetary, that reminds me of a song by, I think it was, um, uh, oh, Interplanetary, oh, it will come back, it must have been the Beastie Boys, that's <laughs> oh, okay. it. Um, anyway, maybe showing my age for the younger no, viewers no, who are watching. <laughs> I know, <laughs> legend, come on. Um, now, who is this for in particular? You mentioned that you have one at home, so I imagine, you know, individuals, um, but perhaps companies as well? Yes, yeah, so initially we're, com uh, we're focused on the consumer, so I myself have lots of files and photos and videos of my family and personal storage costs are adding up. So whether you're with Google, um, Google OneDrive or with Apple iOS system, you're paying monthly now for two terabytes. And once you start getting into the five, six terabytes, it really, really starts to add up. So that's our initial focus. And once everybody has one of these units at home, we're building one of the world's largest decentralized networks, already 900 nodes strong and growing. So then we can turn around to B2B and enterprise and say, hey, let us be your backend, let us host your customers' data at a fraction of the cost and with that privacy and encryption guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Any uh, future predictions for the crypto space? What are you the surest of in the coming years? <laughs> I am I'm not too sure. The one thing I'm sure of is that whatever is built and whatever is going to actually do well, there has to be consumer demand and consumer pull for it. So, you know, maybe uh, we don't know that we need an automobile yet and we also want horses, but we can't just be pushing and pushing technology and ideas and people expecting that adoption to come. So I think you have to start with the real problem. I think you have to remove the friction so that the consumers can adopt and use it. And we really at Function Line see that done through mobile native applications. So whatever I'm using right now on my phone, I want to be able to integrate that into decentralized backends. So I think those companies will do well. I'm really curious about Solana. Solana just had a major 
major breakthrough with Blink, so we'll see what happens with that. And um, yeah, I have lots of hope and faith for some of these bigger teams and what the projects that they're rolling out at the moment. Also interested in Solana, and especially since uh, 3IQ announced the, the potential launch of an, the, first, the world's first Solana ETP. Okay, I'm ETF, not sure. ETF. ETF. I think it's about the same thing. Well, let's see how the Ethereum goes. One, uh, how, how the Ethereum one goes. But I think yeah. you know, sometimes that's kind of out of my peripheral. But it is important because it starts to make it a real asset that people actually start to want to use and invest in, and it brings credence to the Web3 uh, ecosystem. And, and a quick personal, but somewhat professional question: I see PhD next to your name. Oh, what yeah. is your PhD in, and how does that sort of relate to your work today? Sure, so my PhD, I studied at the University of Guelph in Michigan State, and I studied agriculture, so big agricultural systems, and statistics, and like big data. So I, uh, I'm in service of farmers, always have been, and I really see them as one of the biggest data generators and one of the biggest um, sort of use cases that really needs to be able to own their own data and be able to derive insights from it so they can grow us the food for the future. Wow, very well spoken too. Thank you very much, Kate. Thank Pleasure. you very much, Paul. That was fantastic. <laughs>